Hey guys, come back to Bumpy TV. Guys, so I'm going to check in out 15 why. 15. Why did Paul change the commandment of God? Best of Christianity. Guys, let's check this out. I claim that Jesus didn't preach a religion and Christianity was formed out of respect of Jesus and a religion that actually make people follow the right way to God. And this is why the religion was formed, I believe so. Well, guys, let's check him out. And I promise, open mind. I'm going to listen to this open mind. Let's, let's go. Let's now, this is the Paul who has rewritten the life of Jesus Christ and said to us, one, Jesus said, I came not to change and alter the law. Whose law? The law of Moses. Not one jot, nor one tittle, till heaven and earth shall pass away. No one must change or alter the law. For anyone that does so is the least in the sight of God. That's what Jesus said. Now Paul said he came with a new covenant. Paul said he came with a new testament. Paul said he came to the Gentiles and that they no longer had to. Those Guys, I know I have always said this with open mind and please trust my I but it's not fair when you say a verse and not complete it. Jesus said I'm not here to alter the, the covenant of the past but to fulfill it. So you're saying you just stop in there when Jesus said he's not there to all like he, I I love honest people like I can tell you I try my best to be honest I, I don't like when people are trying to play I won't say play this set but it's something like that to me like if you want to like disprove something I feel you should come opening about it so like I can know this is where I'm not getting it right then like I can take correction not you let's just get back i'm trying see i am trying my best i'm trying to listen to this in a way i can get something from it like in a way that i'll be able to understand the religion better i understand mine because i try talking about mine and based on things i know that what i'm actually putting out there because i don't feel he didn't complete it i know he didn't complete the verse but let's get back that followed Paul, they no longer had to observe the law of Moses. What was the law of Moses? The Ten Commandments. They no longer had to. They could eat pig's meat. The Jewish people today, following the law of Moses, they can't eat pig's meat. So how could Paul change that law and tell them they could eat pig's meat? Paul said they didn't have to circumcise all Muslims, all Jews, all of those that follow the prophets are circumcised. How is it that Paul said they don't have to be circumcised? Paul Guys, give me, give me five minutes. I need to make some research. I'll be back. Guys, this says that yeah, for circumcision benefits if you keep the law, but if you are a transgressor of the law, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. Yeah, I, I, I personally like this. This is a shock to me. Like I, I will say, but I really can't talk on it. But based on what I read, it's clearly saying that based on this verse that I searched online, it clearly say that. If you circumcise and you're not keeping the law, it it means not like it's not like adding to it's not making you clean on anything, but if you still commit sin and you are circumcised, it's still not making you like it's still not making you clean or giving any good deeds or stuff like that. But I feel it was talking about faith. I don't think he's saying do not circumcise. Like I think he's telling people that if you are circumcised and you commit sin, it does not make you defend from someone that is not circumcised and is clean. I thought that was what he was saying based on this verse I read. Like let me tell you, let me tell you where I read it from. This is 
this is Romans 2 verse 25. And guys, I feel I have to read, I have to read about it. But I won't say much about what I don't know of. But let's just continue. Paul said they didn't have to observe the Sabbath. Now, the Sabbath is one of the commandments, one of the Ten Commandments. And Jesus said, when they asked him about, Jesus said, do you know which is the greatest of all the commandments? What commandments was he talking about? He's talking about the commandments of Moses. He said, do you know which was the, is the greatest commandment? Jesus said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy mind and all thy soul. This is what Jesus said was the first of the commandments. Because that commandment from Moses was, Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one, and thou shalt not worship anyone except the Lord thy God, and thou shalt not bow down to any graven images in the heavens or in the earth or in the sea below. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God, and thou shalt not worship any gods along with him. That was the first of the commandments. But Paul said, we didn't have to observe that commandment. And it was through the epistles of Paul that Constantine later on, 300 years later, he decided to reconcile this new Jesus at the Council of Nicaea to be specific in the year 354. It was Constantine that reconciled Paul's Jesus from the historical Jesus and decided that he would go with Paul's Jesus and kill everybody else. And that's where the Trinity was born. That's where the incarnate God was born. That's where the atonement was born. That's where the idea of Jesus Christ being crucified, dead and buried for three days and coming back was born. This is where the idea of Jesus being God was born because Constantine accepted that idea because Constantine had already deified his father as Sol Evictus and that's how December the 25th became the birthday of Jesus although Jesus could not have been born December 25th because that would have been the winter in Lebanon and anyone here that is from Lebanon will tell you September the 25th is probably snow in the ground so why would they have a baby in the manger when there's snow on the ground but that was the date of the soul evictus and that's when they changed the Sabbath from Saturday, from Yom al Sabt, Yom al Sabt. All the Arabs in this room know Yom al Sabt, the Sabbath is Saturday. So, how did the day of worship for the Christians become Sunday? Because that was the day of the worshiping of the sun. And that's the day that Constantine worshiped. And that's where they took the name of Jesus and took chains of Sabbath and made it into Sunday and moon day monday and tuesday to another god and wednesday another god and fours day another god and friars day another god all gods of the romans and the greeks what did i have to do with jesus christ absolutely nothing So a new covenant was born through Paul and the collaboration and the official documentation of Constantine who then assigned an official bishop of Rome. That bishop of Rome became the official pontiff of the Catholic Church. And so today, that's why the Pope is called the Pontiff. He's called the shadow of God on earth. Whose shadow? Whose God? The God of Paul, the God of Constantine. Certainly not the God of Jesus. 
Now Paul, through his writings, set up a nefarious situation that virtually stamped out, wiped out, imprisoned, tortured, killed, eliminated all of the Unitarians because those that followed Jesus Christ were called Unitarians. That means they were subscribing to one God. And what, were the, what happened to the Unitarians? They were thrown to the lions. They were thrown to the lions until they were gradually eliminated. Then Constantine made Christianity the official religion. Why? Because he made a distinction between the Nazarenes and the Christians. If you were Christian, you were cool. If you were Christian, you were official. If you were Christian, you could be assimilated. If you were Christian, you were constantized. If you were acceptable, if you were embraced the Pauline doctrine, then you became a Christian. And Christian then became an antithesis of the Nazarenes. It also became an antithesis of the life and the message of the historical Jesus. This new evolution, this new faith system, officially adopted by Constantine, the Roman Emperor, the establishment of the Church of Rome, and the subsequent Christology that has developed. I said Christology. Now what is Christology? Christology is the scientific, systematic, dramatization and mythological replacement of the historical Jesus. That's what Christology is. Because if we want to love Christ and follow Christ, we have to follow the real Christ. We have to follow, find, and subscribe to the historical Christ. The issue is, who is willing to follow the historical Christ? And even after you receive the information, some of you are angry right now. If you had some rocks, you'd probably stone me right now. Some of you might want to invite me outside to beat me up. <laughs> you might want to stand up where you are and just say, you're a liar. I don't care what you say. Jesus is God. And you're going to continue saying that. Because change is difficult. Guys, you know this. You know this. And I will tell you that he got me in two parts. Like, the first part was when he said, Paul asked people not to be circumcised. Like, that part, I can bet you. I want to see a video. Not a video, but I'm going to put something on my community tab. Like, three hours from now like when i'm done with this video maybe before i post this video so if you have seen this video after when you see that like a bit stuff just know it's from this video and about the sabbath day i'm someone that i've asked this question i have asked this question so when he said it, i was like you know the question i asked like it was there I, I was like there was a day i was in junior high i asked my my teacher like i was like why is it that we don't Sabbath is supposed to be on the Saturday? So why are we going to church on the Sunday? But I, I can't really remember the answer, but I believe it was not the right answer because that's why I can't remember it. Or oh, I forget a lot, but I promise I'm gonna check this out. These two places hit me. Like that those are the bullets that he gave me, two places in my chest that I knew I asked a question I couldn't answer because I feel I haven't made research about it yet. But guys, this drawing is beautiful. Like, I'm gonna find it a lot. So guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel. 
Ah, sí, mi estampes.